The meeting is now recording. Excellent, thank you. And welcome everyone. Uh, first, um, I'd like to call the uh, MWPA regular board meeting December 17th to order. And we'll, uh, Allison, will we please call the roll to assure that we have a quorum. Salinas Fire District. Present. City of Mill Valley. Here. City of San Rafael. Present. City of Larkspur. Here. County of Marin. Inverness Fire District. Here. Kentfield Fire District. Marinwood Community Services District. Here. Muir Beach Community Services District. Here. Novato Fire District. Here. Sleepy Hollow Fire District. Southern Marin Fire District. Here. Ditson Beach Fire District. Here. Town of Corda Madera. Here. Town of Fairfax. Here. Town of Ross. Here. Town of San Anselmo. Here. A quorum is present with 85.2% of the members. Thank you, Allison. Uh, so we'll go to item number three, which is agenda adjustments. So I'll entertain any requests uh, to adjust the order of the agenda, please. And for the record, uh, uh, Director Rodoni, I believe, has just joined. Um, hearing no, no adjustments, Director Hilliard, good. Okay, so this is open time for public expression. Item number four, we're accepting public comment over the telephone or through Zoom chat. Uh, if you're participating by phone, uh, please press star nine if you'd like to participate. And once you press the star nine, wait until you hear notification that you've been unmuted and then you'll be able to speak um, for three minutes. Um, if you're submitting public comments in the Zoom chat, uh, it, it, is the Zoom chat active by the way, uh, Exec Officer Brown? We don't have a um, chat active for the board meetings, no. Okay, Zoom chat is not active. So star nine, if you member of the public. So uh, opportunity for public expression, please. I'm looking for any raised hands from our audience members. And there is no public comment. Excellent, thank you. So let's move on to item number five, which is the executive officer's report. So please, uh, Mark Brown, we provide us with an update. Absolutely. Uh, good afternoon, President Goins, board members. Um, first item is to uh, follow up with the exec committee meeting that we had uh, recently this month. Uh, continues to be very good support for vetting um, emerging uh, issues, vetting the agenda, and making sure that we're all um, tracking in the right direction as we pull into the um, board of directors meeting and, and the supports of uh, myself and staff and, and Megan in developing the staff letters and the entire package for you guys. Um, again, the finance committee um, working real well together and you'll see um, as today's agenda, two products that are coming out of the finance committee for our review. Um, and you know, and then a, a note about our standing committees and our ad hoc subcommittees. I think we're getting um, some real good side benefit out of the collaboration that's happening um, because we're actually getting, being able to get in, get some work done, and I'm seeing strong relationships starting to build and um, a rapport and the ability to trust each other and get some actions taken care of. We had our first Citizens Oversight Committee uh, meeting, lots of energy amongst that group. Uh, they um, selected their chair and vice chair, uh, Larry Minicus and Larry Chu, respectively. Nice. They've also identified a subcommittee to work on their bylaws. Um, with Pat Randolph, Rebecca Suggs, Max Pere, and Lucy Dilworth. And they'll make a recommendation to the next, um, to the Citizens Oversight Committee at their next meeting with their recommendations for bylaws and then pass them up to the board for approval. And they've also uh, subdivided their group to, within our standing committees um, and um, the board of who will primarily focus on which board and which committee. Um, another first meeting was advisory technical committee, and we had a very productive meeting. And it was mostly onboarding the, the member agencies, and um, the 17 member agencies were able to get a detailed review of what the MWPA is about, what their role as advisory technical committee is, um, 
a brief and a, a lot more to learn about CEQA from uh, President Goins. And um, they have their next meeting scheduled for Tuesday the 22nd so that they can elect a chair and vice chair and um, appoint a subcommittee to start working on their bylaws. And the flow for that really should be that their bylaws get vetted up through operations committee since they are the advisory to the operations and then operations up to the board for its final review. Um, as many of you have heard me probably say about the advisory technical committee, that's the, the, the popular topic lately, especially um, members at large positions for the advisory technical committee. And my suggestion to you as a board is let the advisory technical committee um, first get their chair, vice chair and their bylaws in order. Let the member agencies that are assigned by the JPA um, get to know each other, get their workflows and figure out where their needs are with subject matter expertise. And then they can start putting together their list of who they think should be advisory technical committee members at large, push that up to operations. Operations can review, modify as needed, and then finally push up to the board because it is um, stated in the uh, JPA language that it is the board that must appoint to the advisory technical committee. Um, great suggestion from Director McMillan. We do have a system within um, our website for people to be emailed uh, for any of our standing committee meetings. And um, so after today's meeting, I'll email you all, let you know what, um, what meetings you can be notified for. And that way, if you wanna monitor any other meetings that are going on, whether it's advisory technical committee, operations committee, you'll know when those meetings are happening, you'll get an email that sends you a link to the packet. So like I said, after today's email, I'll um, send, or today's meeting, I'll send an email out to you all. And then you can reply back to me which uh, committee meetings that you would like to be notified for and we'll get you on that list. Um, Bruce and I had an opportunity to meet with the Community Media Center of Marin to see, and thank you, uh, Director Kohler for that suggestion and connection to see what they can do to support um, our um, broadcasting via Zoom and eventually when we finally get to meet in a room at some point together and have a board meeting um, support through that and also um, post meeting editing so um, the meetings can flow better when people watch it online. And speaking of um, watching online, uh, I received a couple notifications from people who were only able to watch the the first hour of our meetings. And it was a, it was a hiccup in, in Dropbox. I did not anticipate when we were using Dropbox as our storage. So yesterday, um, based on a recommendation from our web developer, I created a YouTube channel for the MWPA and uploaded uh, nine of our, our last nine meetings between the board of directors um, and our different committees into YouTube. And I'm working with our web developer to change all the links in our website. So that way people will um, easily be able to see our entire videos. Um, and that kind of ties into when we start moving into Granicus, um, which is through our agreement with Southern Marine Fire, that's going to help with our transparency of our agendas, packets, subsequent minutes, and then videos. And my goal with that between CMCM and Granicus is that our meetings will be well edited, but they will also be indexed and aligned with the agenda. So if someone wants to watch a particular agenda item in a meeting, they click that agenda item and it'll bring them to that moment in the video. Wow. It really makes it easy for people to focus on what they want to focus on. Um, speaking of our agreement with Southern Marine Fire, I'm working with them to make sure that we are set up for our Form 700 Statement of Economic Interest. So we're in compliance with that. My goal is to uh, tier off the county system. That's an online system and it um, makes it really easy to do annual updates. Or if you're um, having to file a form 700 for multiple agencies that are um, tied in with the county system, you only have to do it once, makes it super clean. Um, senior exemptions, we've processed five so far um, with a total of about $1,100 going out. But I did want to say that we, we received two very positive comments out of it. One of them was a phone call left on a voicemail, and it was a, a heartfelt thank you for us um, being fair and evaluating that. And you could tell that that return of money was really important for that individual's personal finances. And I got a chuckle out of one of the emails I got. Um, the person said that um, 
I have partially, or we have partially reinstated their trust in government. So um, in some environments, that's about as good as you're going to get, right? And, um, and then finally, I'll wrap up with um, uh, Rebecca Suggs, um, who's also a member of the COC and was part of the grand jury that helped, uh, that wrote the report that helped uh, initiate the MWPA. Has been working with Stanford um, to get a grad student to work on a project that will really outline in detail the birth and the development of the MWPA. Um, and they'll also be looking at the ongoing issues and the policy development that we've been going through. And it will be funded through Stanford, so it won't be tapping in any of our um, resources. And they look to start around January 11th. And I'm open to any questions from the board. Question from the board, please. Uh, let's say Director Kohler, please. Uh, you're I muted. I, I got it. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, great suggestion from Director McMillan. Just um, it would be an, an add on to the suggestion about having board members able to get information about the meetings that we have a place on our website where people can sign up to get automatic agendas for our board meetings or any of the other public meetings. We do that in Fairfax and I'm sure most of the cities do as well, but that would be an easy thing for people not to have to be searching around. So if that's something you can do subsequently, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Well, we actually already have that and that's, um, it's, we, we um, send, we have a list of about 70 or 80 people that are already on that list and I'm just gonna add you to the list rather than you guys having to go to, to sign yourself up. Okay, so a member of the public can go to the website and say, I wanna get technical advisory group agendas, all that. Yep, it's, it's, it's the top of the meetings page. Oh, I apologize for not seeing that. Thank you. Excellent, yep, thank you. Thank you. Any other, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Catherine Donahue, please. I see you have a question. Yes, yes. Uh, just on that note, I, I noticed from Inverness Utility District that a lot of the folks as constituents there don't really know what's happening with the operations committee vis-a-vis um, -vis what we're doing here with our committee so any kind of communication that goes to all of the folks would be great and i'll reach out to um chief fox to see if, if there's something that we could connect to make that better thank you thank you director donahue uh, other questions i, I have a, a brief question for uh for for you mark regarding the 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 low income senior exemption, if I recall the board um, approved uh, approved that we stand up a committee this year. And I, I believe that we were supposed to uh, assign an ad hoc team to support that. And I don't believe there's been any action to that end. Is that still a necessity or you're handling it yourself or how, how do you feel about it? The modification we made at our last meeting was that staff would handle the appeals. And then if there's an appeal to the appeal, the executive committee would hear the appeal to the appeal. Thanks for clarifying that. Thank and, and so far, all of the appeals have been um, uh, approved. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Let's see. Seeing none. Um, let's see. Any uh, public comments about this item, please? I'm looking for any raised hands from our audience members. And there's no public comment. Oh, okay. I really apologize. One popped up. Oh, OK. Woody Elliott. You may now speak to the board. Oh, hi. Uh, very briefly, uh, we are uh, very cognizant of the fact that uh, many uh, projects need to be done here in West Marin and in Inverness area particularly. And we're wondering about the grant funding process because we want to be prepared to apply for uh, funds with, uh, with uh, cogent uh, scoping documents and, and whatever to be kind of first in line to get the to get on, get on the, the dance card, so to speak. So what, what are the plans for uh, uh, soliciting grants and letting us know uh, what are appropriate proposals, that sort of thing? Question. And that, that will be part of the 21-22 work plan. And once that gets vetted, then we'll make sure that any grant programs that are part of that will be well communicated. Thank you. Thank you. Any further raised hands? And there is no further public comment. Okay, uh, thanks for those questions. Um, any uh, 
back to the board for any, any further discussion. I'm seeing none, so let's move on to the consent calendar. Uh, item number six, uh, this is an opportunity for the public to comment on the uh, calendar items that will occur prior to the board's discussion. The board can approve the entire consent calendar with one action and the alternative items on the consent calendar can be removed uh, by any board member um, or staff for separate discussion and a vote. So let's see, first um, I'll take public comment about this uh, consent calendar items. Any public comment, please. I'm looking for any raised hands from our audience members and there's no public comment. Excellent. So let's bring this back to the board. Uh, does anyone wish to pull an item from the consent calendar? And I'm seeing head shaking no. Um, and I'll, I will entertain a motion then to approve the consent calendar. I move to approve the consent calendar. Motion by D Director Hilliard. Second. Second by Director Paulson. Thank you. Motion and second. Um, we'll take a roll call vote. Is that correct? Or can we take a... a, a Where's our legal counsel? Yeah, you need to do a roll call vote for a motion. Oh, please. come on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, roll call, please. Thank you. Salinas Fire District. Aye. City of Mill Valley. Aye. City of San Rafael. Aye. City of Larkspur. Aye. County of Marin. Aye. Inverness Fire District. Aye. Marinwood Community Services District. I see a, a verbal eye, but you may be muted. Aye. Thank you. Near Beach Community Services District. Aye. Nevada Fire District. Aye. Southern Marin Fire District. Aye. Vincent Beach Fire District. Aye. Town of Corte Madera. Aye. Town of Fairfax. Aye. Town of Ross? Aye. Town of San Anselmo? Aye. The motion passes with 100% of the vote. Yeah, excellent, thank, thank you board, thank you all. Let's move to item number seven, which is Chipper Days. This is a verbal report from Executive Officer Mark Brown. Uh, Mark, please. Yeah, and it's just a follow up to the uh, wildfire prevention update that we had at the last meeting. Not a tremendous amount of updated um, actual boots on the ground projects, but we did wrap up the last month of chipper days, which was actually an extension that your board authorized, uh, I believe back in September um, because the chipper days were um, booking up and was so popular. So the final wrap up is that we had 2,184 curbside pickups which is an increase of 300 since the last report. Um, and it's 2.7% of our um, jurisdiction, property uh, parcels in our jurisdiction. Um, 14,906 yards, which is an increase of um, 180 dump truck loads. And we um, sent a total of 2,078 cubic yards to recycle. And that's an increase of 250 yards since the last report. For next, um, work plan, we really look forward to being able to connect chipper days with these space evaluations. And we're working, uh, uh, Todd Lando doing a great job of exploring um, multiple different options and developing our D space evaluation um, collection tool. And the, the plan is that when the D space evaluators are meeting with the member of the public at the residence, and they can say, these are our recommendations. And by the way, uh, the chipper truck will be here in three to four weeks. I can push this button on my app and you'll be signed up for it. So we want, we're looking forward to that close coordination and increasing the number of parcels that we actually have visited by chipper trucks. Open to any questions. Uh, th thanks very much. So uh, any questions from the board on this item? I see uh, Director McEntee, please. Thank you, Bruce. Um, Mark, thanks for that update. And um, I, I was going to actually bring this up in the mid-year budget report, but I'll just bring it up now that uh, I, um, I, I'm a big fan of this program and really excited to see success. But I'd like us to have a sense of what the, our limits are on this. And I don't want us to just continue to uh, throw money at the chipper program without having a sense of what its actual impact is. Delighted to hear that you're coordinating with DSpace evaluations. But um, that's my question is, do you have a sense of um, what 
are constraints that we should put on this program because I have a feeling that there's just going to be there'll be endless demand for it if we if we allow it, which is lovely. But we we need to be judicious about how we use our funds. So, do you have a sense of what the limits should be on this, Mark? I don't I don't have a sense on the limits at this time, but I have the um, the process of, that will create those limits. I'm meeting with. Um, the, the key stakeholders um, within the fire agencies that are managing the D space um, from each of our ge five geographical areas and with um, Fire Safe Marin, who managed it for us in the early part of January. And then this will get folded into the 21 22 operation or work plan planning. So, and that's how we'll be able to get that sense of the limits and what we'll budget for it. Great. Excellent question. Thank you. Director McEntee, an answer. Um, let's see, I see Director Berto, please, and then Director Kohler. Yeah, uh, great update, Mark. I, I was taking notes while you were going through that. Did you say 2.7% of our jurisdiction? Yep. Yes. And can you explain that a little better? Is that two point just, you know, of our total jurisdiction, it's just 2.7? Yeah, we have approximately 80,000 parcels within the NWPA. So that uh, 2184 is 2.7% 2 of the nearly gotcha, parcel parcels. wise. And, and I think as we build metrics, um, the parcel pickups is going to be one of our key metrics. And I think we, um, one of the metrics that we should explore is either um, how many parcels that we want to visit or what percentage of increase of parcels that we want to see. Great. Thank you for that. Excellent question, Director Berto. Director Kohler, please. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you, Mark. Um, just a quick question, and I haven't looked, but do we contemplate putting uh, these kind of statistics on the website? I think that would be a great thing to show number of pickups, but also uh, tons per uh, locale within NWPA. I think that kind of stuff really is more tangible for a lot of folks. So I'm just hoping we can get to that at some point. Good. Yeah, we, absolutely. And we really do intend to um, dramatically increase the exposure of our projects through a project management page. Um, but I can get the, um, the final stats and that wildfire prevention report posted on our projects page. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank oh, you. And Brown, um, other, any other questions? Uh, I, I have one question, uh, Mark. Uh, is this just FSM chipper days is, or is this all inclusive? Because I know that some of the member agencies use funds to conduct chipper activities within their own jurisdiction. These were just the stats from MWPA funded chipper. Okay. Uh, managed through FireSafe Marin. Thank you. And the same comment is, is uh, support what Director Kohler said. For, we're we're going to coming into a board retreat and we can have these discussions about metrics, but uh, this is something I think we want to bundle together and not separate uh, a, a subset of that work and, and gotcha. generating statistics. I think we're going through discussion. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, okay, wonderful. Public comment, please. Uh, Allison, does any public member wish to comment? The first public comment will be from Stephen Keith. Oh, welcome, Stephen. Uh, thank you. Welcome. Uh, hello, everybody. I'd like to expand just slightly on Barbara Kohler's good recommendation that the uh, data be, if you can, uh, identified by jurisdiction. And the reason for that is last night there was a long discussion in the Fairfax Town Council with the sanitary district who was raising the rate uh, partially based upon increased uh, green waste, chipper day type stuff. And so uh, it would be helpful if uh, we could look at it, particularly over a historical thing. They made a claim without data and it would be nice to have that data. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Stephen. Excellent. Um, any other member of the public wish to comment? I'm looking for any further raised hands and there's no public comment. Okay, let's bring this back to the board again for discussion. Uh, there is no need for public action. Oh, for our board action, excuse me. Any further discussion? I think uh, we've got some really great comments and suggestions and input here. So we're off to a great start and let's build on that number <laughs> quickly. Um, 
Uh, actually, I do have one one item I just would like to suggest, Mark, and this will be a metrics associated with Chipper Days. Is that not just not just member agencies, but we do have an accounting of uh, the the fire hazard associated with each parcel uh, enumerated in the the community wildfire protection plan. And I think we ought to be looking at um, in the high risk, medium risk, low risk areas. Let, let's let's chunk those out so we can know where uh, where we're addressing the problem. So I'd like, to, and we can talk about that as a board later, but that's my suggestion. And I'll pass that along to operations committee as they start working that plan. Totally do it, real simple GIS deal. Okay, uh, any other discussion? Seeing none, um, excellent, let's move to item eight. Uh, this is an update on the environmental compliance and request for proposals for environmental consultant services. Um, Executive Officer Mark Brown, Mark, please you're going to provide us with an update on the status of the work being done by the board's ad hoc subcommittee to develop an RFP for environmental consulting services. So please, Executive Officer Brown. Absolutely. And we do have our general counsel to back me up in case there's any additional that questions. Work here. And um, so the subcommittee um, is inclusive of uh, directors uh, Goins, McMillan, Kohler, McEntee, and Kimball. And so we independently polled um, each member's questions. Um, I collated them into one document. And then the first committee, um, sub ad hoc subcommittee meeting was to refine those questions, categorize them and figure out which questions were the same, put them together. And then um, they were kicked back to myself and Megan to um, dot the I's, cross the T's, make sure all the editing was right, make sure we got the content, shared it back to the, the ad hoc subcommittee for additional comment, had one last meeting, refined it, and they have been sum submitted to Remy Moose Manley for their review. And we look forward to receiving that um, information back from them in early January. Additionally, Remy Moose Manley provided us several examples of environmental um, consultant firm RFPs or environmental consultant RFPs, um, none from an agency like ours, but from agencies that have very similar um, work goals that we have. So we've got some excellent uh, draft RFPs to, to, to use as examples. And I'm open to questions, unless Megan has something to add. Megan, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um... No, um, that sounded great. Okay, thank you. Board members, uh, any any questions for Executive Officer? I am seeing none. Um, let's move to public comment then about this item. Um, Allison, do we have any public comment? Looking for any raised hands from our audience members. And there is no public comment. Excellent. So let's bring us back to the, for, the board for discussion. Um, thank you for the report, Mark. Is there any, any further discussion? Um, Mark, one, one item, just having, having participated along with the other directors, we did a lot of hard work. Uh, did you mention that um, of what came in that uh, about a half, half of the work is internal um, and uh, about half, half, half the questions are gonna be commissioned and, and addressed by internal uh, uh, board, executive committee, what have you, or the full board eventually, or staff, ATS, uh, or the ops folks, and uh, the other, would you just, I, I didn't think I heard you say that, I think sorry, I had some noise and I walked away to close the door. Uh, would you just address that, or can you please address that just briefly? Yeah, um, thank you for reminding me. Uh, yeah, when we polled the questions from the ad hoc subcommittee members, um, a lot of them were perfect and at the right timing to go to Remy Moose Manley. Others were actual um, pr more process oriented internal, the MWPA flow of information, especially in regards to our environmental compliance. So we subdivided between um, our outbound questions and then the internal process questions that we will need to answer. And a lot of it starts with um, working with the operations committee and as they scope through their work, that's going to um, go through a lot of our, um, that's when we start asking those questions to Remy Moose Manley. And then just as um, Allison was saying that there were no hand raised, we did get one one hand raised before we, so I just wanted to capture that before. Oh, okay. Uh, Allison, member of the public, please. Carolyn Longstreth. Oh, welcome, Carolyn. 
Carolyn, Carolyn, you're muted. Carolyn, I'll request that you unmute on our, there we go. There we go. You're good. You can hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Um, well, I got the impression that that was it for the this item eight and uh, some of us were hoping to get uh, an update on the ad hoc committee's uh, views or discussion about uh, CEQA compliance. You know, the attorney sent some options and uh, we're, you know, we're waiting to get an update about that. Th thank you, Karen. That's an excellent question. Um, let me let me speak first on uh, part of the ad hoc committee. Um, we um, we took all of the questions. We, we took the the, the twenty two page um, uh, legal opinion that we got from Remy Moose and Manley a, as a board, and of course, I think you understand that. Then uh, the directors then took a look at that and asked if there were subsequent questions. This group's commission was to. Uh, to, to pull together and organize follow-up questions so that we could clarify uh, issues that, that we needed clarity on uh, so that the board could then uh, dis discuss and act. This is not a decision-making uh, committee. It was a, it was a process-related committee, uh, the product of which was uh, an, uh, a, a redrafted list of questions for Remy Moose and Manley. And then secondly, just uh, organizationally, we found out that half the work is work that we had to do internally. So we have not uh, discussed uh, environmental compliance processes, you know, procedures uh, in, any further uh, than uh, taking the questions, getting them organized and send them back. So I can I, I promise to you, Carolyn, that uh, once we get follow up questions, we will re-engage uh, fully with, with the board and with the public on, on any decision that we've made. But at this point in time, the, the path forward is uh, absent of having a programmatic EIR. Um, we are, the path forward right now for the advisory technical committee and the operations committee is to follow the recommendations and Remy Moose and Manley, the first handful of pages which charted out environmental compliance. If you're in the state responsibility area, uh, you, you follow the Cal VTP. If you're, if you're outside the state responsibility area, you could use a Cal VTP as a prototype, as a process to go through environmental compliance questions. And, and I promise you that as, as these, uh, and we are bringing on a, a, a program uh, staff who will talk a program and that Dave will, that Mark will talk about later, but um, we will be chronicling issues and questions as suggested in our last full board meeting, which was public was there uh, where uh, uh, the, Samantha, I think was her name of RMM, uh, it advised us to, to, to move forward, gather data, uh, collect the issues that we feel that need to be addressed. And, and once we have all the data we need to make a decision. So this is a work in progress. We're doing our best and we'll assure to be publicly visible, but um, we did not make those decisions. We are in pro, this is the process that we've uh, committed to. Any, um, uh, any other ad hoc, uh, uh, Director Kohler, Director McMillan, um, Director, uh, let's see, who am I missing? Kimball. Uh, McEntee, um, and, and who else did I forget? Was it? Kimball. Kimball, please. Uh, if you, do any of you want to add anything in response to that question? I think you said it perfectly. We were really looking at process, not the specific details. So uh, we're not there yet. It's premature. And uh, I think the only thing is for the state responsibility areas, it also has to be specific to the, uh, the areas pertinent to that, um, to the, the components that are pertinent to that. But yes. you were exactly right. Thank you for the Cliff Notes version, which I did not do. That's what my wife said I should do more often. Uh, Director McEntee, I see you have your hand up. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, I'll just add on to what you both said. Uh, one, I, I want to just be, be clear that it is the law that any of these projects comply with CEQA, so that 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 will be true. Um, the the uh, method by which we you know do that is outlined in the in the memo by Remy Moose Manley. Um, and then I also wanted to just add that um, we 
uh, the important next step really is also to really understand what types of, of treatments we might do and therefore what kind of impact we might expect to see. And that will really direct the uh, appropriate avenue for review um, for, for CEQA and um, you know, following, following all the, the parameters that Remy Moose Manley outlined. Thank you, Director McEntee. That, that was very helpful. We have a lot of work to do, but uh, and I just want to be, be clear of our commitment to full CEQA compliance. Every project must have a site-specific analysis if it's exempt or, or on beyond that. There needs to be documentation laid out. There needs to be posting, public posting. We're going to post that uh, on our website on our, through our project management software. I assure you, the public, that we will be fully visible on what we're doing, and, and please help us work through this process in the most responsible way. So thank you. And we do have another hand raised. If you, yeah. Barbara Salzman. Bar Barbara Salzman, you are muted. Here we go. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Bruce. Yeah, I just had a, a quick clarifying question about what something you said. Did you say that the public uh, comment on this item on the environmental uh, compliance, whatever, uh, will be during the process or after the, the board has approved it? I mean, we, will we have time to um, uh, comment as it before, I mean, not just at a meeting here, but before it, um, um, it is um, uh, on, on the agenda for approval. So help, help me, Executive Officer Brown, can you help me with this? Well, it will be worked through um, our standard process of being <clears throat> first with this uh, ad hoc subcommittee and then vetted with the board executive committee. committee which is a public meeting, which allows for public comment. And then for final approval with the board of directors would be the workflow that we had discussed. So that's, uh, that's clarity that, that um, the next public um, uh, discussion will be through the executive committee, which is the first week of the month. And Mark, you can say on what day, but we'll be notifying uh, you of that. And the public will have a comment, opportunity to comment during the deliberations and, and uh, preparation of the agenda for the full board uh, the third Thursday of the month. Actually, we're not gonna have a full board meeting in January. Uh, so uh, that'll push it back to, to February. Um, I see Director Kohler, please. Or excuse me, Director McEntee. I just have a procedural comment um, that uh, I think uh, as, a, as a matter of practice, we should take all of public comment, close public comment, and then make any director remarks. And rather than what we just ended up doing was a back and forth. And I don't want to set that expectation with the public because I don't think we'll be able to do that going forward. Just a suggestion. Thank you, Director McEntee. Efficiency is <laughs> wonderful. Thank you so much for that suggestion. Um, I see Director McMillan, uh, please. Thank you. Just a process question as well. After the um, responses come back from Remy, Moose, and Manley, I assume that the subcommittee, the environmental subcommittee will get together again before making a recommendation to the executive committee. So there's a, 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 an interim step in there. That is correct. I'm sorry if I missed that. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Director McMillan for the clarification. Okay, any further board discussion? Okay, everybody, thanks so much. This is a... Um, it's a, it's a big project and um, a work in process. Um, so let's see, are we ready to move on to item number nine, uh, mid-year uh, budget report and adjustments? Uh, Mark? Yeah, good afternoon again. Um, and I do have um, Elisa Schiffman for support here. And just a quick comment on the, on the process, the finance committee, we had scheduled two mid-year budget reviews. That way we could have a chance to take a look at it, um, go back to staff for any um, work that we need to do, at, which we did, and then went back to the finance committee for the final recommendations. And we do have three budget changes that we recommend to the board. Um, I think it's important to note that two of them are just simply um, clean up. They weren't um, budget centers that we were over budget on. Um, one of them was to actually change the budget center for chipper days, which your board approved in September to increase, but we just never captured it in the budget language or actual budget center. 
And then the um, Southern Marine Fire District contract, we're actually decreasing that budget limit because of the proration of the actual rental space that we are using. And then where we did go over budget and you know we discussed this um, quite a bit at the finance committee and that is the legal fees. And when we brought on our, our legal um, uh, firms they all had a hard time estimating how many hours they would spend for an emergency agency or emerging agencies such as the MWPA. Um, they really didn't have a frame, a frame of reference. And yeah, we've, we have gone over budget, but we feel that it is a good investment because it's just making sure that we are complying with the law um, and this investment up front could save us down the road with any um, legal fees. And so what we did is we pulled the three uh, firms that we have in um, contract there, and they gave us their estimated hours for the remainder of the year. And you um, have that in your staff report. And then we gave a little bit of, um, of a, um, a fudge factor in there. It's because we rather come in uh, um, under budget rather than over budget and have to come back for another budget change. And so the increase recommendations to a total of 150,000 for the remainder, for the total of the year. And open to questions. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, questions um, on this item from the board, please. I'm seeing seeing none. Uh, let's take this to public comment. Uh, any of the public would like to comment on this item? I'm looking for any raised hands from our audience members. And there is no public comment. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, I believe we should go to discussion, but um, is seeing no questions. Um, I, I, uh, Director McEntee, please. Yes. Sorry, I, I, my daughter came home in the middle, so I didn't get my hand up in time for the questions. <laughs> um, uh, so um, uh, I, I appreciate that there are the three items that um, got revised for this year's budget. I'd like to know what um, uh, are suggested for next year's budget so that we, um, you know, so that given what we now know. Um, uh, and then um, the, uh, the chipper program I already kind of mentioned, I just want to, you know, want us to um, make sure that we have a sense of what the limits are. I think last time it just sort of came at us as, you know, hey, you guys, let's increase it. And um, we made that decision absent any context. And I'd like that to, to you know, be established going forward. And Mark, you already mentioned that. Um, and then uh, my last question is, um, is that Zoom cost that 550 bucks, is that for the year? Is that, for you know, that just seems really... Is it really that high? I'm um, just, just curious. So um, as far as what the recommendations for next budget year, it's going to, um, I don't have the date off the top of my head, but we have um, next fiscal year uh, budget planning scheduled already for the fiscal or for the financial committee. So that's where we'll make the recommendations for those budget centers for next fiscal. And um, again, we already talked about the chipper days and the Zoom cost is annually, not monthly. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Thanks. Rick McEntee, did you get that? I, I see we're distracted. Um, but, yeah, I, I heard, I heard, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, it's sure. coming home right now. I, I appreciate you, you checking in. Oh, thank you. Bruce, Bruce I have a quick question as well. Director Paulson. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, uh, Mark, um, I just, I, I didn't get to see the uh, the estimates for the extra 135,000, but maybe this is you know good for the board and also for the public. Uh, is there a breakdown of what's a startup cost and what might be recurring and, you know, maybe just some sense of the formula that we might use in the future for forecasts? I think Director McAtee was asking sort of the same question, like what, are, you know, what have we learned from underestimating, you know, what, what exactly will occur again in 2021? And, and that, that will be with the work that staff will do with the finance committee. And we'll, um, now that we have a little bit of better idea of our, burn rate for lack of a better word of our time with the legal firms uh, we'll be able to pull them for that 21 22 estimate and also in consideration that um, we know that we'll be bringing on an environmental firm and we'll have the contract and language to work through that right. and um, so we're getting a better workflow estimate for them to give us a more accurate record Great. and one one more follow-up question so if i understand it correctly the you know, the amounts are about a 2% variance on our overall budget. So we have a $20 million budget and, and this uh, budget adjustment is, is approximately 2% and this uh, is for the half year point or I'm 
trying to see it on the timeline. You know, where, where well, are we? For, it, the adjustment, the 150 is for the entire year. And we already spent, I believe was, um, was it 90, at Lisa? 70 to 90, something like that. Great, thank you. Uh, Lisa, you are muted. Sorry, we've spent 48,000 so 40, far. Okay. <laughs> okay. These, these are all good questions for the finance committee. I think um, we're, we're, we're getting more mature here as we learn. And uh, anyway, so here we go. Let's see, uh, Director Hilliard, please. Hi, Catherine. I'm serving on the finance committee. I just wanna tell you that we're watching carefully because we're just gathering experience this first year, which will give us some matrices on, you know, that we can really use and do our planning when we do our retreat and have much more information available to you. The first year out were pretty guesstimates because we didn't know what startup costs would be, but I assure you we were all working toward the same thing, getting much more specific detail. Thank you so much. Thank you, Director Hilliard, excellent comment. Uh, I see, uh, Director Berto, please. Yeah, just a question um, about, cause you know, we have a fixed budget due to the ballot measure, I didn't glean from the staff report where the adjustments are coming from. That is, that what comes out of the admin category of the um, budget. And is that based on there were less admin costs at the beginning, so we had some savings there and we're taking those savings and applying them to these um, areas that we expect to be over in? And we are, yes, and we are far below the allocated admin costs. Um, we're at um, about 4% when we're allowed uh, of the six, we have 10% of the 60. So we're at about 4% of that 10% of the 60. <laughs> Great math. Yeah, I, thank you for that. I just, I think that would be important to include in the staff report where we're actually taking the adjustments from. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Director Burdo. Any other? So I believe we're- Bruce, I'd be happy to move this item, uh, recommendations for the Finance Committee for the mid-year budget report and adjustments and the 12720 MPWA budget report. Excellent, we have a motion. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second. second. Uh, Director Burdo, second. Motion is second um, and Allison, please call the roll. Salinas Fire District. Aye. City of Mill Valley. Aye. City of San Rafael. Aye. City of Larkspur. Aye. County of Marin. Aye. Inverness Fire District. Aye. Marinwood Community Services District. Aye. Near Beach Community Services District. Aye. Novato Fire District. Aye. Southern Marin Fire District. Aye. Vincent Beach Fire District. Aye. Town of Corte Madera. Aye. Town of Fairfax. Aye. Town of Ross. Aye. Town of San Anselmo. Aye. The motion passes with 100%. Excellent, thank, thank you, Allison. Thank you, board. Uh, let's move on to item number 11. MWPA position descriptions. Um, this is executive officer and the authority are to create. Number 10, Bruce. I'm sorry? Number 10. Oh, Financial okay. policy development. Oh, I'm, I apologize. Yeah, number 10. <laughs> we are. My thumb is uh, okay. Financial policy development. Uh, Mark, will you give us a report on proposed financial policies for MWPA? Thank you. Yes, and I do. And, and Elise is still here again to support as needed. And um, quite a bit of effort went into the developing of the policies and we have, uh, I believe it's six in front of you now and we'll have more to bring to you. Um, it ranged from two meetings with the finance committee, two meetings of the ad hoc subcommittee from the finance committee with directors Hilliard and Finn and then many, many staff hours, mostly from Elisa. Thank you very much, Elisa. And we used a lot of um, Southern Marin Fire as a template, but we also reached out to other JPAs and one of the JPAs that was very helpful for us um, was um, TAM because they do a lot of uh, 
pass through funding like is going to be similar to what the MWPA is going to be doing. Um, I received some great feedback. Um, some of it, um, it would be fairly easy to adopt through um, motions for suggestions to the language and some of it is a little bit more detailed. And my suggestion is to um, adopt with um, motion language these policies with that have the easy to capture changes but if we have any more moderate or major revisions that are recommended I suggest capturing those suggestions and then pushing back to the finance committee so that um, we don't deliberate um, and edit policy line by line with with our um, during a board of directors meeting um, and I would like to get the finance policies drafted or approved so that we can start our administrative work, actually to start doing the business of the MWPA following our policies. Uh, the purchasing policy is one that um, uh, had a lot of the work that we put into it. And it's also one of the ones that we received considerable comments. Um, and we recommend following, and I'm, all, I'm not, I'm going to ask you, you guys don't make me say this more than once, California Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting Act. From here on out, I'm just going to say CUPCA because it's easier to say that, but um, we recommend following CUPCA guidelines and in looking at it, it um, seems that many cities and agencies across Marin are using that policy. Um, the credit card policies is a pretty standard policy for most agencies. Um, disbursement is the policy I believe that our member agencies are going to have uh, the most interest and, and, and I'll clarify a little bit for MWPA core projects or 60% funding, we will follow the purchasing policy because it's our process and our funding that we would be um, our funds that we would be expending therefore we would um, follow our policies because the core money is not a pass through to the other agencies. Whereas in the disbursement policy, that's for the defensible space evaluations that agencies that choose to do their own defensible space, they're receiving that funding. And then the um, local project mitigation funds. So it was pretty clear that the defensible space should be a, a, a direct pass through to the agencies that are conducting their own D space. And that means 55% of their portion when we receive those taxes in December 40% in April, and then 5% in June. When it came to the local mitigation projects, we went back and forth during discussions quite a bit, whether it should be a pure pass-through, or should it be a reimbursement, or should it be a front load when we get the first um, set of monies in December, followed by reimbursement. And where we landed was making it a true pass-through. Um, it seemed to be most uh, true to the enabling language and the tax ordinance. And you'll see our accountability comes with being able to see budget reports on a quarterly basis that the, the, the funds are being used as they are supposed to be used. And my biggest concern is that it would not be supplanting other actions that are being, um, should have already been going on with that local member agency. And then we also, um, you'll notice that we uh, have a clause that if they don't expend all of the funds, then there will be a reconciliation at the end between our accounting staff and the local agency accounting staff to, that, that we agree that that amount of funds are left um, available. And the reason why we wanna do that is that we want the agencies to spend the money on, on quality projects and not do the end of fiscal year spending that a lot of agencies run into. Also, we realize that a lot of the projects are gonna span the fiscal year because much of our work will be done um, in the summertime period and with the fiscal change on July 1st. And then some of our member agencies, quite frankly, um, don't have uh, a huge local mitigation budget. Therefore, they may wish to pull um, two or three years with the worth of local mitigation funds and then have a larger project at the end of those three years. But they'll still be getting work done through the um, core projects in their areas as well. And then um, once these monies pass through from us to the local member agencies, then it's, they, they will follow their uh, purchasing guidelines. The, the remainder of the policies were very standard for um, governmental accounting practices on the web transparency. And thank you for Director Kohler for bringing this up. Um, you know, we talk, it talks about, um, uh, board of director reimbursement. And it's very clear in our JPA language that um, 
our board members are not reimbursed. However, a recent grand jury report recommended, even if that's the case, to have a policy statement that if you did reimburse or pay or compensate, I should say, that it would be listed in your policy. So that's why we kept that in. And I am open to any um, questions. Excellent. And, Don't and Lisa, that. actually, before I, um, Lisa, did I miss anything through all that? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Alyssa. Um, so excellent report. Uh, so questions from the board on this item. I am seeing, oh, uh, Director McMillan, please. Sorry, and this may be pre a premature question based on the environmental subcommittee, but are we tying the funding to local agencies uh, on compliance with CEQA or is that, is that a premature question? In the disbursement policy under for the local mitigation project, um, we do have a statement that um, all projects that re require environmental compliance must meet environmental compliance. Thank, thank you, Director McQuillan. That, that was my question also. Um, seeing no further questions, let's uh, take public comment, please. Allison? Looking for any raised hands from our audience members. And there is no public comment. Okay, thank you, Al. Um, let's see. Come bring back the board, Director McEntee, please. Thank you. I just had. A, I have a. I have a bunch of deliberative comments. Um, my overall comment is. Uh, I've passed all this to to Mark in detail, so I'll just go over quickly. Um, I think that in general, these are written in a, in a relatively circular and confusing way, and I think it would be very helpful to both the, the, uh, the board, the staff and the public, if, if some of this information could be presented in table format, like, you know, what, what um, you know, from this much to this much requires purchase order, you know, executive officer can sign off, you know, but I think you can simplify it a great deal. Um, and I would make that suggestion that we do that. Um, uh, the, the, and that would uh, elucidate some things such as um, the executive officer has check signing authority up to 25k but contract signing authority up to 60k which we've are, which is indicated as a binding contract I think we need to make that consistent um, so you know keep keep it all 60k um, and uh, we have a we have a, a, a policy that all purchases are going to be as budgeted um, I think we should have a policy for uh, unexpected expenses such that you know mark brings them back for a budget adjustment um, if it's within within his signing authority he can make it happen beforehand if it's you know all kind of in keeping with with what we're trying to do um, so that I think we should add um, uh, there's a mention of SB 854 I think it would be better to uh, clarify what's required there or or somehow or indicate all applicable law because um, we may want to have it encompass things that could pop up in the future um, uh, the credit card policy, wondering if that also needs to be uh, broadened to apply to ACH or any other direct pay scenarios. Um, I'm going through this rather, rather quickly because I've already given all this to Mark. Um, uh, for opted out agencies, um, I'm wond uh, wondering if we need to give ourselves some leeway in case the county is delayed in giving us giving us the money um, that we would give it. You know, with you know, that's that's a notional date that we could disperse the money. But if the county is delayed, we will also be delayed. Um, uh, and then there was a requirement that we, that uh, um, agencies, both member agencies and um, opted out agencies would give some sort of um, accounting to us before they get paid. And it says we're, we would uh, withhold their monies if they don't submit the quarterly reports. I'm wondering if we legally can do that. Um, and, uh, um, and then three other things here. Sorry, again, I'm just going through this rapid fire. Um, uh, monthly financial reports, it'd be great if those included kind of all the standard reports and not just income expense, but also balance sheet, you know, assets, liabilities. Um, uh, we should, I think, daylight who the people are that can give the two signatures for the checks. Um, and then I wanted to suggest that we also submit um, uh, compensation data to Transparent California just in, in, in the interest of transparency. So that was my rapid fire list of comments that I also uh, transmitted to Mark. Thank you, Director McEntee. Mark, are you uh, <laughs> taking notes or? Yeah, uh, Elisa, we, Elisa and I already coordinated. She's she's taking these notes and anything that she wasn't able to capture, I'll be able to forward along. Okay. He, I, I've already sent all these comments to him. So he, so he didn't he didn't have to take notes. Okay. Sorry for that awkward absence or silence. So thank you. Um, 
as far as the suggestions go, um, it sounds like they've been registered and uh, will be acted on appropriately. Um, some will have to go to the finance committee. There is some work yet to be done, like the graphics and for visual. So anyway, thank you very much, Director McEntee. Um, I have some deliberative comments. Director yeah. Kohler, please. Okay, so I have also provided these to Mark beforehand. Um, and so on the purchasing policy, the first policy, I'd like to see a local preference policy integrated within. And I've given Mark the language that we use in Fairfax. I'd also like to see us incorporate a green purchasing policy element. We've done this in Fairfax and I could dig it up if we need it. But also I believe MSEP has developed some sort of a template on that. So that's the Marin Climate Energy Partnership. And it doesn't require us to only do local or only green, but I think we should state that that's where we wanna be if we can be. And then um, a couple of things, uh, more things that I brought up, business charge accounts. I know right now we only have Mark as the only one signing off on the charge accounts. And, and the way it's written, it says that it just goes to the executive officer to decide. I think, you know, we're a new agency. I believe that uh, before we add more people to the list, that it should go to the finance committee just to make sure that we have just double checks. Um, and others may not agree with me, but we haven't really talked about the expenditure authority for our executive officer. And again, I'm kind of going with the idea we're a new agency. So a lot of the towns, not all, uh, have town manager authority at about 25,000. That's not to say uh, that there aren't ways around that to go to the finance committee to get more authority. But I think I'm sort of more of a go slow person to start out. So I would advocate more of a cap of 25,000. Going along with the idea that uh, Sashi mentioned is the way the policy is written as far as when you do informal, formal bidding, um, there's a little bit of a glitch where it says 5K to 60K, it should be throughout, it should say 5K to less than 60K and then greater than 60K above. So when you do that chart, I think, you know, it's not clear when you jump from one to the other. So, and then again, um, the cap awarded by the EO, I know Director McEntee said 60K, I think we should keep it all at 25K. That's my thoughts, uh, take them or leave them. And then on the internal control policy, um, I've already provided all these comments to Mark beforehand and even Bruce, but um, we have 300K as the authority for the executive officer to sign checks. And then there's potential others like board members I think 300K is pretty big for a new agency to start signing off on checks. I would advocate for a lower amount of 50K and then having others sign as well. I just think we have to do, I mean, I have implicit trust in our executive officer, but I think as we start out, we really need to do a lot of checks and balances just to make sure that the taxpayers feel really comfortable that we're doing everything possible to protect uh, their interests. So thank you for that. And I have provided all these to Mark in advance and the local preference policy. Thank you. You're muted, Bruce. You're muted. Thank you. Uh, the dog was barking. Uh, Executive uh, Officer Brown, then um, your, your response, please. And um, do, do um, Catherine or <laughs> Director Hilliard has her hand up. Maybe we can um, have all the directors um, speak, and then I can. Okay, excellent. So I'm sorry, Catherine, I missed you. So, as one who has seen some of the bills that have come in, we are getting billed from. Um, Fire Safe Marin in amounts that are pretty high. So 
The question is, do you want this uh, administrative process to come in between the incoming bill and the outgoing payment once when it's already been approved? I'm just putting that out there because I think that the limiting the executive officer um, to a smaller amount may require more administrative. Uh, anyway, maybe perhaps um, Elisa can give examples, but I think 25,000 is too little. Okay, that's my, my input. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Director Hilliard. Um, and uh, what you're saying is that pre, these are pre-approved <laughs> expenditures. Right. Uh, as opposed to something that 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 is conceived, and so you're saying it's 25 is too low, and I I would agree with you that if we pre-approve an expenditure, we know who it is, what's being done, uh, what to expect. We're we're gonna that that we want to facilitate uh, you know efficiency at the administrative side, and I can tell you I I'm I'm the one that drives down <laughs> drives down to Sausalito and signs checks, and if I don't have to do that, that would be fine. Um, so for pre-approved processes, uh, I, I think twenty-five thousand dollars is 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 uh, too too much work. Um, we're, we're we're micromanaging our executive officer's uh, efficiency. Um, if I may just um, add one thing, which is that the bylaws adopted by the board um, do specify that the executive officer's spending limit will be set by the um, a recommendation of the finance committee. So. If this was the recommendation of the finance committee would be the 60, I assume, based on these policies, um, that could be one thing you may take into consideration that that recommendation came from them. Thank you, Megan. Uh, other directors comments. I mean, Bruce, I have a, my hand up, but hi, you Dennis. Oh, sorry. that's okay. Thank you. So I think we've heard a really uh, many good comments tonight, but I just wonder if the process may be a little bit off where there should be an opportunity for these comments from the board members to go back to the finance committee before this policy comes before the board. I think Mark needs to get something in place right now. And I understand that, but it seems a lot of this discussion could happen before the policy actually comes to the board because rewriting the policy at the board or making changes to the board for me doesn't work very well. Yes. So I would recommend that we build more time into the recommendations for policies so that board members would have time to comment right back to the subcommittee. And then they would subsequently meet, entertain the comments and then when the policy comes to the board, it's in a, in a, in a more finished, uh, finished uh, approach so that we don't have to go into the depths of trying to make changes at the board meeting. Anyway, that's sort of my thought, but Mark may need this approved today so he can start working. And I understand that, but I think in the future, we should build a little more time into it for board members to make comments, maybe back to the committee um, and make sure they're included in those committee invites if they want to participate. Thank you, Director Rodoni. That is the process that that we envision with with uh, standing up the financial committee. And my my thoughts exactly, uh, Director McEntee, please. Uh, um, I think um, Dennis makes a very good point, um, and I'm, uh, it's unclear to me whether that was. I think that's what you were saying, Bruce. Is that, that that's what this is? Is allowing the board members to make the comments, and then it goes back to finance. Um, but uh, uh, the um, I think it has to kind of come through a board meeting. Megan, correct me if I'm wrong, in order for it to be Brown Act um, proper. So just making sure that we we follow that procedure. But I, I totally agree with Dennis that um, uh, you know get 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 the board members' comments, send it back to finance, and then have it be approved. And I, I imagine that this is not something that has to be approved today. But uh, love to get some clarification that, that, on that. That is an excellent comment and clarification, uh, Director McEntee and uh, Director Kohler. Please. Yeah, I would just like to say this. I don't have time to participate in other committee meetings that I'm not a member of. I think Dennis' suggestion is the right one. I realize we're at a juncture in time where we're trying to get all this stuff in place. And it may be that it is important to move forward and get this resolved um, later with the Finance Committee. And my suggestion would be this call this a draft policy that we see if there's the votes to approve it and let Mark go forward for now, but get the finance policy really working on. I think the most extensive comments came from Director McEntee and I, 
And so when it does come to the board, again, and if there are back and forth needed with the members who submitted comments, let's do that. But I think in the future, what I heard Dennis saying was really, let's build more time. Yes. So maybe it comes to the board at one point and some of us provide more comments than others, and then it comes back. And I realize we just don't have that luxury of time now. So I suggest we move forward as a draft policy, a working policy, just so that um, Mark can get a lot of work done, but with the direction to please take very seriously the comments that Director McEntee and I and others provided. Thank you. Ec Director Kohler, thank you, it was excellent. And um, I'm, I'm seeing people nod, I don't see any hands up. And so what I'm hearing is, uh, is Director Kohler has made a motion um, it, it, uh, that this be a draft, draft policy and that the directions and comments and suggestions uh, from Directors McEntee and Kohler and perhaps others uh, be, uh, what would it be remanded to the financial committee for further discussion incorporation and to report out to the board in future meetings. Uh, is, that, is that accurate, Director Kohler? Um, I would just say make one friendly amendment. Yes, remanded to the finance committee and brought back to the board for potentially a few more changes. Okay, excellent. Uh, um, I'm seeing heads nod. Um, we have a motion, we have a second. I see uh, Director Kimball uh, has seconded, motion and second. Uh, thanks all. Uh, time to call the roll, please. And uh, Allison, Allison, before we go too far with roll call, I did get an email from um, Director Kohler that her, her internet has failed her and she was able was unable to continue in the meeting. Okay. Uh, we'll that wasn't go. me. Who was that? Did you say me? Colin. Inter Director Colin. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank, thanks for the information. So motion second. Um, Allison, please call the roll. Salinas Fire District. Aye. City of Mill Valley. I'm sorry. I just need clarification on the, on the, the, the motion is that we approve this as a draft and, but then it's still going to get worked on. I, I, I would like to, I'm sorry. I, I just want Mark to clarify. Do you need to this done today? In order is the most important is the disbursement policy because we are receiving the funds from the county now and the local agencies would like to see their disbursement. Okay, all right. But, um, um, okay, then um, then and, and the motion is to to make this a draft and that it would get revised and come back to us soon. Okay, in that case, right. I sorry for sorry for the clarification in the middle of it. That's an eye from Director McEntee. City of Larkspur. Aye. County of Marin. Aye. Inverness Fire District. Marinwood Community Services District. Aye. Muir Beach Community Services District. Aye. Novato Fire District. Aye. Southern Marin Fire District. Aye. Stinson Beach Fire District. Aye. Town of Corte Madera. Aye. Town of Fairfax. Aye. Town of Ross. Aye. None of San Anselmo. Aye. The motion passes with 100% of the vote. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, board. Really excellent discussion and on moving this forward. And we'll continue working on this. Uh, now it's time for item number 11, uh, which is MWPA position descriptions, uh, executive officer, and the authority to create the planning program manager position. Um, so Mark Brown, is going to provide a staff report on the position descriptions uh, for executive officer and planning program manager. And he's seeking approval from the board to create the planning and program manager position within, uh, within the authority. So uh, executive officer Brown, please. Absolutely. And, and part of it is um, the approval of the executive officer position description. And I'll touch on that real quick. Excellent. And that was really drafted upon um, and Jean Bonander did, was the primary author and she took, um, most of the information was from the recruitment flyer for the executive officer, balanced with her tenure as the interim executive officer and then uh, fielding some questions or sending some questions my way um, about my experience as the executive officer. 
So that's how we came about with that, um, with a recommendation from the executive committee to make sure that flexibility, that language that states that the position really needs to be flexible, the organization needs to be flexible, and also um, to be present at all levels of the organization, and also to work with our legal counsel closely. So those items were added. Um, for the planning and program manager position, I'm looking to slowly grow the NWPA so that we can be efficient, effective, flexible, and be able to expand and contract and get, stay on that key term of being flexible. Um, we really anticipate an aggressive uh, program list this year for the 21-22 work plan, estimating about $10 million worth of projects. Um, as you may re remember, um, we had no boots on the ground projects for the work plan for this year because it was acknowledged that we had no staff that would be able to push that package of work through. And that's how we've been able to survive without having the planning and the program manager. But if we're going to be pushing together, uh, pu pushing forward $10 million worth of, of projects, you know, I ask that you can look at it like we're a public works agency because we really are more akin to a public works agency than we are a fire department. And if you think about $10 million worth of public works projects funded out of the general fund of that organization, what type of staff do you have to get those projects pushed through? And I've, I've seen across the state agencies that have been hamstrung by a lack of staff. They have the grant money available for these types of projects, but they don't have the internal bandwidth to actually have someone carry these projects through. And my vision of the planning and program manager is someone that has the, the experience on with um, environmental practices as well as getting projects completed and someone who can function independently because it's just going to be a massive um, bolus of work. And I'd like to get them on board early as the, the um, operations committee starts their work for the 21-22 work plan. This way, these the core projects can be started and planned properly from the beginning and then have the same person carry it through implementation and then completion. And, um, you know, they would be the, the someone who bridges between, with, with myself, but they would bridge between core D space and local specific, make sure there's consistency in the way projects are being handled. Um, and I see them being the, the lead MWPA staff member working with the operations committee and advisory technical committee. Now I'd be present at those as well but they would be the point person. They would be the person that's working with the chairs for agenda development, so on, and staff reports. Whereas I would be focusing on the board of directors, finance executive and citizens oversight committee. Um, they would also be the point person when we do get our environmental cons um, consulting firm on board. When, you know, again, they would build the project with success in mind through the environmental com um, compliance process, build it in a way that, would make it efficient through the environmental process and they would pass that project off to the environmental compliance and be the person that is the uh, um, communicates back and forth make sure that we're environmentally compliant another thing that we've been struggling with a little bit is the consistency of d space across the different jurisdictions and i see this person making sure that our d space evaluations are consistent across our jurisdictions coordinating the chipper days. Uh, Fire Safe Marin has done a stellar job of doing that for us, but quite frankly, that's not their primary mission. They were doing it because we didn't have any staff to do it. So this person would be taking on the chipper day program, which we see expanding and also make that connection to the D-space um, uh, evaluations. And then um, after we revamp our website and have a really good project management um, page on our website, it would be this person that's really tracking the data, inputting the data on this page. So all of our projects are very um, visible. Uh, grant management, including applications for grants and then disbursement out to grants. And you know, dispersing grants is a tremendous amount of workload within for a staff member. But and I really look to grow um, with your support our grant program within the MWPA for our citizenry. Um, abatement program management, one of the pieces of language in our JPA is that 2% of the DSpace funds are to go towards an abatement um, balance or fund. And so for agencies that have an abatement ordinance already passed or agencies that are gonna pass um, that type of ordinance, someone needs to manage working how we're gonna abate those properties and then work on 
the property liens that most ordinances call for so that the fund gets um, replenished. And then I would continue to maintain my presence with uh, the Marin County Fire Chiefs Association. And this, I see this person being um, the, the, the lead for their subcommittee, which is the fire prevention officers. And obviously I will be very, very present um, both in the public and at all levels of the organization and our, our partners. Um, one of the things that I forgot to mention at the beginning is I had a little brainstorming group that included uh, Chiefs Tyler, Weber, Tubbs, uh, White, and in city managers, uh, Schwartz, Cusimano, and um, Schutz. People that were really part of the architecture of the JPA and also who have been well involved with the operations committee. And they um, have a really good sense of what the operations committee is going to be putting out, the volume of work that's going to be created. They also have a great sense of managing programs within their own cities and fire departments. So I, I see that, that, that they're a really good barometer and they're strongly supportive of the position at the level that it was written. And, um, you know, there's a fine line um, that we have to balance between being cost efficient and being able to have a salary that is going to be competitive in the market. And I know there were, um, you know, a robust discussion about the salary and compensation packet with the executive committee um, with, with some concerns, but it seemed there was overall support for that. And then the finance committee was actually concerned that it was uh, costed a little bit low and that we may have a little bit of a problem with our recruitment. Um, so again, like I said, it's a fine line that we're gonna have to balance to make sure that we're, we're frugal while being able to be competitive. And then right now, my recommendation is that we consider this entirely administrative costs, but the JPA language is very um, open to, or it states that the board needs to come up with what the formula is for administrative costs. And I don't see this position being wholly administrative. There's gonna be times where they are actually out in the field conducting work. And I think that we can work out some type of formula that says, when they're on this type of activity, it's going to be considered operational. If they're in this type of activity, it's going to be um, administrative. And I really think the process to create that formula as the JPA language states is uh, to work with the finance committee and the exec committee back and forth with uh, working on that and then bringing it to the board for final approval. And um, the last is we tabled any development of an administrative position description um, after looking at exploring, expanding our um, contract with Southern Marin Fire, which in a nutshell gives us eight hours per week from their finance director, 10 hours from a finance uh, assistant, and then two hours per week from their administrative clerk. I'd hope to be able to expand that contract, and I just got back from th them two days ago that they won't be able to expand that contract, so I'm going to have to retool that process a little. And I think, well, I know the place I really wanna focus on right away is a communication specialist because we need to be able to get our message out clear and effectively to our um, uh, taxpayers. And also I really wanna get that revamp of the website done and that would be through some type of communication specialist. So uh, more to follow on that. And with that, I'm open to any questions from the board. Excellent, thank you, Mark. Um, board members. Any questions? Uh, Director Berto, please. Yeah, just um, wondering, and I not to put any, not to put you on the spot, Mark, but um, just because I'm not great with this either. But doing math, because um, we budgeted four hundred thousand for personnel, and based on the commitments, meaning you and I believe we paid Gene Bonander out of that pot as well. Um, I guess what do you have a sense ballpark of what's left over for this fiscal year that was budgeted in the personnel budget? We're at about, oh, for the personnel budget. We're probably just a little bit over fifty percent, but for our overall administrative budget, we're at about forty percent. Gotcha. So, um, see if I had any other questions. Um, at this point, I don't have any other questions. That was that was my main question. Thank right you, there. Director. Thank you. Thank you for answering uh, it. Uh, thank you, and Director Kimball, please. 
Yeah, I just to follow up on Steve's uh, question, um, Mark, Mark, the sum of you, the program manager, and who else brings us to the 40% of our, of our annual budget? The, we have a, um, we're working on the invoice with um, Gene Bonander that right now that's, that's the two. Yeah. I, I'm thinking more not in the startup mode, but we're in an ongoing mode. And now we've shed the, the temporary, you know, the, the interim help that we're getting from outside. And now we're in sort of the, the, um, uh, the regular metabolism of you and a staff. So at this point, bringing on the, the new people, where does that take us to in terms of what percentage or dollar amount of what, what the measure allows for, measure C allows for? It's, it still brings us, it, with the new employee, it would actually keep us for administrative costs and anticipated legal fees. It would keep us at about 50% of what we are allowed for administrative costs. Between four and 5%. Yeah, and, and that is with you in two other positions. One other position at this one time. Position. Okay, what, one of the concerns that I will share is um, I, I want to, I'm hoping that we don't, become penny wise and pound foolish on this. If we don't hire at a certain level of quality and capability of these individuals, we're throwing the money away. Yep. So I wanna make sure that we, um, we get quality people and um, follow the, you get what you pay for. Otherwise we could spend 80% of what we think we want and maybe get 40% of the output. So I uh, just wanna put that in there as a uh, kind of a, uh, a touchstone that we all think about and maybe comment on as well. Thank you. Thank and, 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 you. Uh, President Goins, if I might remind, we're, we're still in the question phase right now. Perhaps we should, you know, make sure we focus on questions and then. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll hold that. Um, I questions, please. Uh, Director Paulson. Yeah. Hi. Thanks. Um, Mark on, on the job description that you um, enumerated, which could you give a rough rank of priority? Like what are the different issues, you know, between environment and working with tech and operations? You know, what would you be looking for primarily and what would be sort of secondary? For me, the primary, and it, it's, it's, it's a very difficult balance between someone who has the environmental experience and a person who has uh, the planning background. So, you know, a, a slight lean towards the environmental experience, but coupled with someone that has the planning background. But I, I do want to make clear that we would not be providing our own compliance. We would just want the environmental experience so that we can build our projects for success. Okay, and the grant writing is not not high there on, on the list, or is that is that for another role? It would be, uh, probably fourth or fifth in order, but it would fall within this person's responsibilities. Okay, thank you. Um, Director Kohler, please. Yeah, um, so this kind of follows on what Director Kimball and Director Broto brought up. So you mentioned along with this position, and I understand we budgeted 400,000, that um, you're looking at a communication specialist and now it seems like some sort of finance type admin people because Southern Marin can't um, seem to fulfill that. So where do you think that brings us? Well, if we were to do the, um, and it's not the finance piece that, um, Southern Marin can't expand upon. They're, they're handling the finance piece and have the bandwidth to continue to support the finance piece. So I wouldn't be looking to expand that part. It's more in the communication specialist and I would be looking for a service contract for the, at this point until we can um, retool what route we need to take. And, and do you think that a service contract works given AB5? Is that something that we're gonna get in trouble on again? I don't think for a li the limited scope project that we would be asking them for primarily to build uh, a website and to update our um, social media sites in order for us and then build a communications, a strategic communications plan for us. Sounds like it's a one-time project for us. I think we're good. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Director Kohler. 
Uh, questions from other board members, please. Um, seeing none. Bruce, uh, I, I have my hand up, oh, but oh, sorry. I don't know what I, happened to I, it. Why I can't see your yeah. hands today, Dennis. I don't know, it's all right. <laughs> I have two of them too. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, question for Mark, as you develop this minimum qualifications and the compensation, as I understand it, you spent time with city managers and fire chiefs and Gene helped you work on this. Did, did um, our consultant um, um, that worked with your um, RFP uh, help, I can't remember their name right now. Yeah. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. So I just, I just wanna refresh who worked on this and made these recommendations with. Um, Gene, I, I, I'm trying to make sure I'm understanding your question properly, but it was Gene Bonander and then the the group of fire chiefs and um, city managers. Along with Nelson staffing. Well, the Nelson staffing helped with the, the building of the executive officer position description, not with the planning and man. The, thank you for clarifying that question. But the city managers, did they feel that, that looking at the minimum, qual minimum, minimum qualifications that this compensation range was a reasonable range? They did, but they, they they had a little bit. Um, one of them during the finance committee, um, uh, Dan Schwartz, who's on the finance committee, did express some concern that perhaps it it would not be as competitive as we hoped. Thank you. Okay. Um, other questions? I'm seeing none. Thank you. Um, let's take public comment on this, please, uh, Allison. The first comment will come from Stephen Keith. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you. Um, since you're going to have this person do some grant writing, presumably we will get some grants. And as I understand, uh, it's fairly customary to have something around 5% in the grants to cover uh, admin. Uh, do, do we need a policy that uh, fits that into our budget and uh, I guess holds holds the five percent extra contribution out of the uh, ten percent admin ceiling. Our next other public comment. Our next public comment comes from Terry Thomas. Welcome, Terry. Thank you. Good afternoon and uh, thank you for the ability to address the board on the planning project manager position. My name is Terry Thomas and I am speaking on behalf of Fern. We would like to request um, the, uh, your consideration of four changes to the position description. We appreciate having the position as a point person for environmental work. We have been advocating for a natural resource management position and still think that position would be important to add. However, we have now been told by your executive officer that it was decided not to go that route. This is disappointing because there does not appear to be one member in the hierarchy of M MWPA organization that has a professional knowledge of marine ecosystems and how to ensure they are appropriately treated in project implementation. It was great today to hear um, your executive officer introducing the position with the environmental knowledge first and as a point person for the environmental consultant and to have him mention that the environmental is, a, is one, really a number one priority. Therefore, we request the following four changes to the position description, if at all possible. The first would be to alter the equivalency to further assure the ecological approaches to the work on the ground. We applaud that the position is offering to, offered to degrees in environmental and or climate studies, physical and biological sciences. We're glad those will be accepted. And we request deleting the public management and engineering degrees to ensure that you have someone on staff with on the ground knowledge of natural resource management tools. Experience of an engineer could be taken as a more grudging approach to compliance with environmental requirements as opposed to embracing the best environmental practices. Number two, under the equivalency, we request adding a, a category to the five or more years of planning and management. The words requested would be natural resources management. So the wording would be, would read like five or more years of planning, management and natural resource management work. 
Third, we request that you add to the knowledge section, knowledge of ecological practices. This would be to conserve biological diversity, decrease invasive non-native species, restore structure and diversity of native plant communities, protect critical habitat and special status species, and prevent erosion. Number four, we request that you add to the ability section, ability to evaluate natural resource issues and the ecological practices to use on the ground for all types of projects to ensure the best conservation techniques are practiced. Um, I, I know this is kind of what um, you all were already thinking about this position from what I could tell from the comments today, which were really helpful. And I thank you for considering these changes. Thank, thank you, Terry. Excellent comments. Um, any other public, public comment, please? I'm looking for any further raised hands and there is no more public comment. Oh, I apologize. We have Belle Cole. Uh, welcome, Bell. Uh, Bell, you're muted. Is that better? Yes, thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'm not going to. I was interested in, in, in Terry's comments and feel strongly that they, uh, they reflect those of us in the ESP community, and she's part of it. But I wanted to say this is a complex job. It looks like there's different kinds of skills and, and uh, expertise that are going to be needed. And uh, one question I have is whether this person is going to have any support that would perhaps uh, uh, encompass some of the kinds of things that were being requested. In other words, will she, he or she be looking, working with others on the staff who have that kind of background because it's hard to imagine one person being able to be, be represent all those different capabilities on the other hand you really would it would be helpful to have that that's one thing and uh and i just want to say that those of us who are participating in this process are delighted that there's going to be a person there who's who will we be able to communicate with and talk to and provide advice and also uh learn from that person how we can better interact with the different committees. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. Uh, Next public comment will come from Ron Arliss. Uh, Ron Arliss, you recognize. Welcome. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, well, I understand the uh, speaker talking about the environmental requirements. Um, I, would, I would oppose those kind of um, requests not on the grounds of the content, but just because this initial hire appears that you need more of a generalist um, and that you need somebody who can uh, be, uh, have a much broader scope and ability um, to actually help mark out on many things. And it doesn't mean that the person wouldn't have, because you do have built in, um, you know, qualifications, requirements with uh, environmental stuff. But I'm concerned that by getting down, if you'll pardon the pun, into the weeds for this particular description, um, you're going to find some more generalist um, applicants um, getting knocked out. And that would be too bad. Uh, again, as a first hire, I think it's better to go with the generalist initially and that person may come eventually in some period of time, one month, two months, three months, and ask for a more specialized additional hire. And that's where those types of uh, specific um, or, uh, suggestions by the environmental person um, would definitely be uh, warranted. But I think at this initial stage, starting off um, with the broad agenda that MWPA has, um, I would urge you not to adopt those, but go with what you already have drafted. Um, I think you'll be well served with a, an initial hire uh, with this kind of broad background. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ron. Thank you very much. Thank you much for all the public comments. Um, is there any further public comment? Looking for any further raised hands and there is no more public comment. Seeing none, this comes back to the board then for uh, further discussion. Um, I see uh, Director 
uh, Birdo and Director McEntee both. Uh, so Director Birdo, please. Sure, if I could figure out how to unmute myself. Um, yeah, so the question I asked earlier was just to kind of set up my understanding of kind of how we're going about this. Um, I think the need is very well demonstrated here. Um, and I appreciate the staff report on it. The only thing that struck me, and, and even more so after our conversation here today, is that, you know, it, it's this whole notion of what this um, position is. And it seems like it, it's a project, a program manager, right? And, you know, this is the boots on the ground um, support that we're going to need. Right. So, in, in looking at, you know, the county that I work for, I looked up, you know, kind of relevant program manager positions. Um, and the range I found was more, it, the low range, it was basically 86 to 107 if you're looking for a program manager type, right? I, I think, you know, as was discussed here, there are some engineering components that we may want or, you know, types of background that would be more specialized, which could see us go into a higher range. Um, but I think that you know, the, it struck me that the range may just be a little high. I would probably bring the higher end down to about 115 or 120 personally. Um, my fear here, and this kind of gets to Director Kimball's comments, and it works both ways where you get what you pay for, um, you know, being an executive manager in public service, you know, we've hired for, or I've seen, you know, people hire at positions and have been on hiring processes that you're giving a salary that's more in line with an executive level salary and but it's really a boots on the ground job that you need and so you have somebody that may come in and figure like oh you know i'm the manager type and and not really prepared or, or has the desire as much to do the boots on the ground work so i just want to put that out there for consideration i think the the position is well needed but when i think about it like that like one of the positions that I really care about, as you guys probably have garnered, is the communication specialist position. And I'm wondering if we could bring this salary level down a little and get a true project manager that allows us to put, you know, more money into that, um, that communication specialist position. So just, you know, fodder for thought there. And um, that's kind of just how I was thinking about it. Uh, I'll defer to the group um, on, on that. Thanks, Director Berto, and I see Director McEntee, please. Thank you, um, I, uh, Steve. I'm glad you um, you went first there because I have, have some comments that'll catch um, tag right onto yours. Um, I think that uh, um, right now this position is sort of the way it's defined is kind of a catch-all. I kind of there's there's a, there's a lot in there, and I I really appreciated uh, Ron Arliss's comment that we what you're looking for is a little bit more of a generalist. Um, at this point, and that we may want to, you know, drill down and get more sp specialists um, as we go. And I think that as when we go through our retreat, we might have a little bit better idea of kind of how we're reimagining Mark's position now that we kind of know more. Um, you know, it kind of it was created with this sort of real operational mindset. And uh, as Mark very wisely put it, this is not a fire agency. This is really more of a public works agency. And, and there's you know, the kind of support that Mark is gonna need is should reflect that. So um, I, I'm going to somewhat agree with um, uh, Director Berto that um, uh, we, we, we constrain it a little bit more as a program manager type job um, with a you know, slightly lower um, salary range. And, and I was looking at that range as, a, as the total comp range um, and I think that that's, it's important for us to approve a total comp um, so that we know exactly what we're talking about. We're not talking about this salary. Oh, but then it actually has this much in benefits. I think it should be very, very clear what we're approving. Um, but I think it's also just very clear that, you know, Mark needs help and I, I don't want to delay him getting help at all. I think that, um, and we, I think it's very clear that whatever this position is, it's going to evolve significantly over, over the next year or so. Um, another thing I wanted to make sure is, is taken into consideration is for a small agency with very few employees, um, you, you need to create a place for someone to go if you're going to retain them. 
So if you're bringing in someone that's a junior person that would be in that program manager type of job, um, then you have a place for them to go. That person could, you know, build some skills, build some experience, um, you know, move into a senior position, maybe eventually move to be a successor to Mark, um, you know, be groomed for that. So I think it's, it's really important to have, um, have thought through kind of as you're bringing somebody in. If you're bringing somebody in junior, you can kind of, you know, bring them up. If you're bringing kind of a senior, more executive level position, as, as Director Berto, Berto mentioned, um, they'll stick around and then they'll go somewhere else where they can get, you know, get more um, and, and do more. So I think those are considerations that are gonna be important. Thank you, Director McEntee. Uh, other directors, please. Um, Director Kohler. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, I have given some of my comments before at the executive committee and I was listening really carefully to what Director Berto said about, um, we're looking for more boots on the ground rather than an executive level. And I really do feel that, um, you know, I performed at executive level and uh, frankly, I could do this job. There's a lot of detail in there, but I think the detail is really letting someone know it's a lot of jobs and you really are looking for a program manager who can do boots on the ground as well. Um, I think the salary should be lowered and I don't agree with the idea of, we're not gonna build a huge infrastructure of a lot of employees. So it won't be that there will be a lot of steps that people can go to, but let's say we hire at this lower level and in the executive committee, one of the things we talked about was trying to hire at the low range first is where does the person go from there? is that ultimately, let's say we hire a man or a woman who's doing a great job two years down the road, potentially we upgrade that position to senior project manager or something like that. So there is a step, but since we're not gonna have a lot of staff, there's not gonna be a lot of opportunities for movement. And yes, maybe Mark will get pushed out and the person takes his job. But I also think, and uh, Mark and I disagreed about this, but my recollection of the executive committee is we talked about the amount as being a cap on the total amount and the benefits being within that. That's not my and, recollection. And so are you shaking your head no, Bruce? No, that's not my recollection. Director. Okay, well, I usually have a pretty good memory, but um, what, what I think we did with Mark's position was the board said, okay, this is the amount we're going to go for and then figure out the benefits within that. So there was a cap on the total amount, uh, whatever way you want to figure it out. But I think this salary that I'm looking at right here with those benefits on top, which are actually a higher percentage than what Mark gets, um, ultimately gets close to Mark's salary exclusive of benefits. And I, I don't think that's where we wanna be as starting out. So those are my thoughts. I think another thing Director McEntee and I talked about today is maybe we spend a little time on personnel issues at the retreat and she'll talk about that at the retreat item, but maybe we need to smush this a little more uh, before we go forward with it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Director. Let's see, I see, I see Director McMillan hand up and Director Donahue next. So Director McMillan, please. Yeah, I just would hate to reduce the salary in the job description and eliminate a bunch of really qualified people. Um, I, think, I think Mark will know the right candidate when he sees it, him or her, not it. Um, and I, I would not want to be um, penny wise and pound foolish and um, cut off. This is a really unique position and it's gonna require a lot of different skills. Um, so I don't think we wanna shoot ourselves in the foot. Thank you, Director McMillan. Uh, Director Donahue, please. Um, and we can't hear you, Catherine. No, you're, cannot hear you. Cannot hear you. Nope. 
No. Director Donahue, we're, we're unable to hear you. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry um, if you could, and we don't have a chat box, I, I understand. Is that correct? That's or correct. You could Unfortunately, yeah, this, that is correct. So, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Donahue, but we're unable to hear you. Catherine, could you, if you email me, maybe I can pull it up. Um, oh, now we hear you. Oh. Okay, good. Yeah, now we can hear you. Oh, good. Being an Inverness, right? Pretty faint. No, no, I, I, I think that um, the salary was very, very um, appropriate. And, uh, you know, being a being hospital administrator at Kaiser and everything, I think that if you're going to get a qualified person, you need to get money, right? And it's so important with this group of position that we need to recruit a good person and, and even like have to pay for housing or whatever. We've been dealing with this internet um, and the leanness and, and we need good qualified people. And the only way you're going to do that is to save money. So, okay. We do it with nurses, we do it with first responders, we do it with, you know, people in the emergency department, housekeepers, and everything. We've got to pay the money. So, th th thank you, Director Don. You very, uh, really appreciate your, your input. Um, do we have other directors uh, input at this time? Uh, Hilliard, Bill, um, Berto, and uh, Rodoni. So Hilliard, uh, Berto, and... I, I think, did I see uh, Director Ravazio? Okay, so we're starting with, with Catherine, is that correct? Yes. Okay. I think uh, it was Director Rodoni was first before me and then me. If he wants to go. No, okay. I, what I just want to say is going back to our original mission, what are we trying to accomplish here? Basically, we know that every one of our projects is gonna require an environmental review. And it will take someone who has the knowledge of both and the sensitivity to the environmental concerns, plus somebody who has to fill out all the forms, do all the work, even if it's a negative declaration, know when that's necessary, and also be able to work with operations people and to me, that is not a boots on the ground position. That is an executive level position or a higher up position requiring that kind of knowledge. So in my opinion, the salary range is right. The job description is possibly could be, um, you know, tailored to be more specific, but it's something that I think is very much needed. And I would support the salary that's range that's been um, presented here. That's it. Thank you, Director Hilliard. Uh, and Mark, I, I, and I, is it Dr. Director Vazio? Is that correct? Next? Yeah. Sure. yeah. I can go next. Um, I would agree with uh, the most recent comments as well. I think the salary range is adequate. I have been through four different public work directors uh, in my time on the, in the council and getting the right one makes a huge, huge difference. And I think, you know, paying the money to get the right person will make Mark's job not a lot easier. And I also have worked personally with a number of the people who Mark worked with to put this description and salary range together. And if those guys are saying, this is what we need to do, I fully agree this is what we need to do also to make this thing work correctly. It'll make all of our jobs easier and make our work much better, thanks. Thank you, Director Vasio. Um, and is it Director Rodoni next? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Director Doni. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I I just would uh, agree with the last couple of speakers. I think it's important that this this person is a key employee and in, uh, in our and part of our future. And the requirements we're looking for, you know, there's a lot of skill that's needed here. And I think that keeping the salary range the way it's been um, recommended by a group of people who do this all the time and the finance committee makes sense. 
uh, we can always start on the lower lower range if we find someone that's less skilled or um, you know needs to finish its last last part of its degree or something at college or whatever. But I do think we need the range to to get the right person potentially, and and uh, you know I'll support that going forward. The recommendation of the finance committee. Thank you, Director Doney. Um, I see seeing no other hands. I, I'll just join as a director that. Uh, if, yes, if you may, Director Berto, um, and, and we do we do have your hand. Um, I, I, mean, I I see that that, that we're, we're 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 pinching pennies here, and we're we're standing up a new organization. This is not just a boots on the ground position. This is a position that will transcend. That will that will be able to boots on the ground, understand what project where they are, understand understand systems, understand natural systems, have communication capabilities be able to articulate and moderate and, and coerce and, you know, get compliance. You know, th this is not just your everyday walk in person. We are in Marin County. And uh, I, I am, I am for, I think talking $10,000 at, at, at the time we're spending on this, um, that, that it, it is, is, is not, uh, not going to change the fact that we have to have a, a package that is appealing to the highest qualified candidates, uh, the comments that came in from from Terry Thomas, for example, the expectations that they that they have this, you know, this this competency. They they, I mean, we want somebody that comes in and sees has a full vision of what this is and grow them into this position. So I I support the last comments that I I, I believe that uh, Nelson Staffing did the market research. They've worked with us before. Uh, they're the ones that brought us uh, Executive Officer Brown, and I, I think it is their sense that I, I would rather follow. So I. I, I too, and I, I think we, we do need at some point have to decide uh, to, to come to a, a motion and a vote here. Um, are there any further, let's see, so excuse me, uh, Director Berto, please. Yeah, um, just, you know, again, my main concern with the higher end of the salary skills as we're having this discussion is it, it sounds like we are looking for an executive is what I'm hearing. And in that, realm we're not going to if we say let's hire that at the lower scale we're not going to get somebody who's got the qualifications we want you know at that lower scale so if that then we should bump it up you know um if, if we are looking for an executive because i was under the the impression based on the staff description um in the staff report that this is more of a project manager um, and it's billed as such. And so, um, you know, again, if it's more of an executive position, let's define it as such and do that. I just worry that we're going to wind up hire, hiring somebody who has the qualifications we want, but because they want to come in at more, you know, their negotiation brings them to more of the mid or high level of the scale. I think it may have been Barbara that mentioned it earlier. There's not much for them to go if you factor in the annual step increases or whatnot. So we, and, and there's no problem ever, you know, that we could, we don't have a ton of staff or a ton of union obligations or process that we would have to go through where to reorg a position or something like that to change, you know, the, the class, the scale, we could do that at any time because it doesn't have like broad sweeping effects. So I, I just think we should define the project, the, the position as it is. And um, if we're looking for an executive, we should probably bump it up. If we're looking for a program manager, then we should probably just bring the top down. Those are my final comments on it. Thank you, Director Berto and Director McEntee, please. Thank you. I, I'm, um, again, appreciate going after you, Steve, because I, I, I'm not Sure, clear that it is an executive position. I think it's it is more of a program manager kind of position. And um, you know, there, there's, I think your 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 point is well taken that we that it needs to match up that the, the what's in the description needs to match up with the salary. And um, you know, it, it's we can we can cut this up however we want. We can say we want a an exec more executive level type person. Make sure that the description is it, it follows that. Um, and then give the higher end of the salary, or we can make it more of a, a uh, you know, mid-level program manager person that would have a lower end salary and have more place to go. I'm comfortable with either approach, um, but I think that we need to, 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 to make that, 
make that consistent. Um, and I think that we probably need to hear from Mark what he what he would rather have. Um, or we can also leave it up, give him some flexibility so that um, as the candidates come in, he can he can make an offer um, that more fits the talent that he gets. So um, my, you know, for, from my point of view, the priority is making sure Mark gets adequate support to be able to do his job. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, we, I think we, um, as has been mentioned, you know, don't need to get in the, like, in totally into the weeds of what this position is, because it's going to change. There's no way this position description is going to maintain, be the same in two years as it is, you know, today, because it, the, the whole world will, will change and we'll figure out what that's going to be. So um, I'm inclined to want to ask Mark, at this moment, what he'd like to see, given you know what what you've said, Mark, about wanting to keep flexibility um, and be able to you know be be nimble but still maintain um, what you need, and also just the the you, what you noted about not having not being able to have additional admin support that you very much need. Um, is this a, you know is is getting someone in the door you know is is that person going to need to be able to do a little admin support for you? So I, I'm I'm curious you know what the short term needs are. Um, and what you would prefer, Mark, would you prefer somebody, you know, a, a program manager at the lower end that could grow into another role, be more of a generalist, or would you prefer someone that's more of a second in command, um, a COO kind of person? Wonderful question. Thank, thank you, Director. Uh, so, And my um, clarification is I'm really looking at a, a management level, not an executive level, but a higher end management level, not a mid management level. Okay, thank you. And, and the you are right, the lack of administrative in, um, increase does add a dynamic to it, but I'm, I'm looking long, long term, it would be a short term adjustment for that person and I to make. So Bruce, if I could just follow up. Um, uh, so yes. just give the analogy of, um, uh, so I'm chair of the LAFCO. The LAFCO is a very small agency. Um, we have an executive officer, um, a, a, an analyst, and then we have a commission clerk slash junior analyst. And we had a lot of debate about, um, you know, when our, our clerk left, what to replace that person with. And it was, we were very much aware that our analyst um, is kind of a young up and comer, really sharp guy, not someone we're gonna keep forever because our executive officer isn't going anywhere. So um, it was sort of acknowledged, well, you know, we're probably only gonna have him for another couple of years. So it would be smarter to hire a clerk who is a junior analyst who could be, you know, in a couple of years when this guy leaves, could step into the role. So we we cut up the, you know, the positions really with the knowledge of what we were going to have to realistic expectations on what we were going to have to face. You know, the you know, if we're going to you're going to get somebody in that role, um, you know, unless this is like a, a, you know, a fit like a glove kind of thing, they will move on to something that is, you know, uh, that can advance their career further. So given that, you know figure out how you want to, um, you know, fill up the bench so that you are not left in the lurch and you're not constantly um, training someone. So just wanted you to give that some thought as well. And um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And, and President Goins, we had uh, Dan Schwartz, who's part of the ops committee and also part of the finance committee that was key in, um, in this language. I just moved him in as a panelist because he had some thoughts to share. Dan, are you there? Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, you didn't have to pull me out of the audience. I was happy to participate from that side, but um, I wanted to offer a couple of comments as someone who probably was pretty uh, hard on Mark to make him articulate for me what he thought the staffing was going to look like for the organization. And I've also had the chance to be pretty close to the organization since its formation to get a better sense of what the early year demand is going to be. And I think Mark's on the right track with his instinct that he's going to be very outward facing for the organization. And I don't think that was something we readily contemplated when we were building the organization and writing the JPA. The demand on his time to interface with constituency groups and the community is, I think, much higher than I certainly anticipated. So in talking a lot with Mark, it's become clear to me that program manager position is probably a primary in, inward facing manager. And in addition, Mark's vision seems that I think is correct is you're looking at a manager that has to be capable of speaking across multiple disciplines to a variety of contracts, a contract consultant 
uh, advisors to the agency. And those are unique skill sets that you need to be paying at a manager's level if you're going to get the right type of person. And I think paying that extra salary will return highly in investment because you'll have somebody who's capable of making sure those consultant contracts are managed efficiently and correctly. Uh, I strongly encourage the board to move forward because Mark needs this position. And I, I think you'll find this salary will, will work to get somebody in the door. Though I did wonder if it might even be a little low for how broadly it could end up being assigned. The other thing is I, I appreciate greatly as a city manager, We're starting to lose you, Dan. The board discussion of retention. Dan, we're we're not we're not able to understand. I think you. in order to need to be prepared for the fact that you're going to later in their career and really want to will um, you know the experience turnover and you just have to be okay. And he just dropped out. Okay. Okay. Um, do we do we need a motion for yeah. something? Dr. Kimball, please. Do we need a motion for something or or? Is yes, it, we we do need a motion. Uh, um, the executive director is is uh, requesting support board support for a position at, as, as described in the board packet. There's been a lot of discussion. Um, but yes, uh, David, um, please. Do we need to hear from Sashi first? Just a, just a quick, um, uh, uh, Megan, if, if it turns out that Mark uh, finds a candidate that it, it turns out this is too low or this is, you know, needs to be adjusted in some way, um, does this vote preclude Mark from having the flexibility to be able to um, make a higher offer or, or change the job description to, you know, to fit what he's, what he ends up finding in the market, um, or does he have the flexibility within the admin budget and within his? What, what, what does what does this vote bind him bind him to do? Is what I'm asking. Um, it, it would actually be specific to the motion. So if you wanted to articulate a motion that said gave him a little more wiggle room to do that, that would be fine. Um, otherwise, it would be what's written down in the salary range that's written down would be something he'd have to adhere to. Okay. So I, I would suggest we do that, and if, if David wants to do that, I'll, I'll second him. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Director Kimball, please. Well, that's exactly where I was going. I don't know how facile we are with our executive committee, but if, if Mark bumps against the ceiling and needs a quick turnaround, we that's have right. an executive committee whose purpose is to be there for that. So my motion is we, uh, we approve what Mark is proposing. Uh, I think he has heard all of the input, which has been very helpful to me, by the way, the back and forth and all the points of view. Uh, so I move that Mark uh, be authorized to go and recruit at this salary. If he's finding that's a challenge, he um, has the authority to go to the executive committee and, and ask for support if the salary is too low. Thank you. Meg uh, I'll <laughs> second that if Megan thinks that that's an adequate motion to give is there any language you'd like to add to that, Megan? I think um, rather than seek their support, it would just be to authorize the executive committee to act on the board's behalf to increase that range if the if the board's comfortable with that language. Thank you, Megan. And a, thank you, Director Kimball. Thank you, Director McEntee. And Gabe, you almost got your hand in there. <laughs> um, yeah, just a second. Yeah. Yes, OK. So we have a motion a second. Um, uh, this is time for roll call. Lena Steyer District? Yes. City of Mill Valley? Aye. City of Larkspur? Aye. County of Marin? Aye. Inverness Fire District? Aye. Marine, Marine Woods Community Services District? Aye. Near Beach Community Services District? Yes. Novato Fire District? Aye. Southern Marin Fire District? Aye. Vincent Beach Fire District? Aye. Town of Corte Madera? Aye. Town of Fairfax? No. 
Town of Ross? Aye. Town of San Anselmo? Aye. The motion passes. Excellent. Thank, thank all for this really thorough discussion. Um, let's move on to item number 12, board retreat. The recommendations receive report from the ad hoc uh, board retreat steering committee. Um, um, Executive Officer Mark Brown, please give a staff report to us. And um, this is another one of the ad hoc subcommittees that I think is really um, helping build the relationships and rapport within the organization. So um, the, the members are Director Goins, McEntee, Paulson, and Kimball as the ad hoc subcommittee. We, we met last week and we were working on objectives and content. Uh, it was uh, obviously decided that it just needs to be remote. It cannot be in person with what's going on right now. And based on it being remote and being able to maintain attention span, we need to keep it shorter than a day. So we're still ironing out the final timeline, but it will be a shorter time frame. Um, the objectives that we <coughs> worked on are listed in your staff report. So I, I won't read them back to you, but we spent a considerable amount of time working on those objectives. We've also agreed to bring on uh, Gene Bonander and Bill Keene uh, we all know who Gene is. Bill is recently retired um, from uh, Ags and Parks in Sonoma County. He lives in Fairfax, and um, I'm, I'm super impressed with what I've learned from him so far. And the three of us met on Monday to help refine some of the um, ideas that we had with the ad hoc subcommittee. And the ad hoc subcommittee will be meeting again tomorrow with uh, Bill and Gene to refine the agenda, schedule, objectives, so on and so forth. And um, based on a time crunch, we are recommending that the executive committee have the authority to um, approve the budget for that on the January 7th meeting. That being said, I don't expect this to be a, a remarkably high retreat. Um, we have our Zoom account already is established to be able to manage um, uh, breakout rooms and that we're going to be using and for the limited amount of hours that we'll be using gene and bill and most likely one other consultant um, it won't be a, a high budget item but tomorrow we'll start scoping that budget to bring forward to the executive committee and i'm open to any questions thank you thank you uh, question from the board please i am seeing no hands up although i'm not good at seeing hands apparently um, let's take this to the public for comment, please. Allison? Ron Arliss, it's your turn for public comment. Welcome, Ron. You're on. Yes, thank you. Um, question, are uh, you going to notice this for a public meeting? Uh, it's a retreat, absolutely. Thank you. And you'll include the Zoom and all that stuff? Absolutely. Thank you. Excellent. Thank, thank you, Ron. I'm looking for any additional raised hand, and there is no more public comment. Okay, so um, back to the board for any any further discussion, and and a, and assume consensus for authorizing the executive committee to approve the budget and the retreat at its January seventh meeting. Please, this you can rate you can indicate your support by raising your hand. Now, Julie, did you want to talk or just raise your hand? Um, I just wonder if uh, the sooner the better you come up with the time that this thing is going to happen so that we can plan accordingly. Thank you. Yeah, thank I you. I hope to have that nailed down tomorrow. Yes, and uh, Director Ravasio, I think I, did I see your hand? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, so this is something we can in indicate your support by raising hand. Apparently, we do not have to take a roll call vote. So those in favor? I am seeing uh, unanimous. Bruce, seat. I just had one uh, consideration. Yes, Director Berto. So I know that when we did our reorganization in San Anselmo last year and you know appointed people to boards and commissions, um, we didn't do it. And this was because of, I think, a full agenda early on. We didn't do it until our February meeting. So I don't know if there's any consideration just putting it out there i don't know if anybody is going to be like terming out or whatever just want to make sure that we would have the full participation of the board that will be the board for the next year at that time 
Thank you. That, that's a very smart uh, observation. Um, yeah, we, we need to be sure of that. Uh, and I, I think, can we commission uh, Executive Officer Brown to chase that down? Um, and I think the only seat that was um, left hanging following this last election is the San Rafael seat. And it sounds like they'll be deciding on Monday who that seat will Perfect. be filled. Okay. Thank you. So again, um, approve the budget for the board, let the executive committee approve the budget for the board retreat at its meeting on January 7th, 20. So by show of hands, uh, those in favor, please raise your hands. And I am seeing everyone, but uh, Gabe, who I can't see you, Gabe, uh, but I've got everyone's hands up at uh, Gabe Paulson, who I can only, and there's Gabe's hand, Gabe's hand too. So it, it is unanimous. Thank you so much, board. Really wonderful. I'm looking forward to this retreat. Um, virtual retreat. And I, frankly, the title should say virtual retreat. Uh, Executive officer, please, because yeah, you're right. You're right. I think we're going to Hawaii. We've already seen some correspondence. So if, if you would please change the title to virtual retreat, strategic retreat, I think that'll, that'll take Bruce, us. Bruce, yeah. can we just change our backgrounds to like tropical backgrounds? And yeah, you know, we're, you're going to have to do the hula then. <laughs> um, Okay, so let's move on to item 13, which is uh, committee reports. Uh, uh, we have an operations committee update from uh, Jason Weber, please. Jason, are you with us? Unfortunately, Jason um, was not able to attend. So uh, the primary report is to um, announce that, are you guys hearing me all right? Yes. Okay, the primary um, report is that they have an, um, nominated a new chair uh, based on um, starting with the new chair in January so that they are um, staggered off the elections for the board. And um, Chief Bill Tyler from Nevada Fire will be the new chair. And Dan Schwartz is staying on as the vice chair. And then they are actively starting their planning process for 21-22 and working closely with the um, emerging advisory technical committee. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mark. Um, Let's see, item uh, 13B, we do have a uh, in the board packet, uh, a report and update from Fire Safe Marin. Is, is this uh, just the written update or is a verbal component to it? Uh, I don't see Rich in the audience. I do see Todd Lando, perhaps Todd, if you raise your hand, um, if you need, feel the need to give out a further report out um, other than what was written in the board packet. It's a very, very, very well-written report and they're doing amazing work and I've been discussed several times here in the meeting. So um, let's move on to item C, which is evacuation route study. So I'm assuming, uh, Mark, you're going to report out for Jason? I am. And uh, we've had considerable discussions amongst the ad hoc subcommittee within the operations committee, um, working with the um, de developing the RP for the evac study and some um, changes in the course that we were thinking that we we're going to follow are forthcoming and we're going to pump the brakes a little bit for the evacuation study and um, we're evaluating a, an agreement with a firm that can help us um, with evacuations in the short term and a specific around traffic modeling and then um, use that in coordination with the RFP for the total evacuation study and um, we're revising that now and it will be before, before the executive committee in the January meeting and likely to be the one and only business item for our January meeting before we start our virtual retreat. Thank, thank you. Um, thanks, Mark. Um, so any public comments on these committee reports? These are informational only. Thank you. Our first public comment will come from Carolyn Longstreth. Carolyn? Carolyn, I'll ask you to unmute yourself from my end. Yes, I'm being called on, I take it? Yes. Okay, I'm here. Somebody uh, has a question? Did you raise your hand? Oh, you know what? I think it was still up from before and I I thought I took it down just now. Okay, thank I don't you. have a comment right now. Uh, we'll, okay. we'll, be, we'll talk with you later. <laughs> yep, yep, sounds good. Have a nice evening. 
Thank you so much. Okay, let's move on to item number 14. Uh, information items. Does staff have any additional information, any items to present uh, to the public, the board? I'm seeing none. Um, item 15, board members, do you have requests for future agenda items, please? Seeing none, excellent. Uh, it is 5.21 p.m. and we'll officially adjourn this meeting. I wish happy holidays to you all and thank you for your incredible engagement and involvement and in all, all that you do. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking and uh, see you next year. Stay safe. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. I'll see happy some holidays. Thank tomorrow, you. Right? Thank, thank you, everyone. everyone. Bye. Thank you I'll, so much. I'll see some of you tomorrow. Don't forget. Yeah, what time, Mark? Is that? Um, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Okay. I, I, I didn't have it on my calendar. Thank goodness. Thanks so much. Okay. Yeah. See ya. Everybody. See Thanks, Catherine. Oh, man. Mark, hope you're doing well. I'm doing okay.